What's on mini fans? In this vid we'll be making some simple barricades, slightly reminiscent of the old Necromunda Outlander expansion ones. And as always, if you like anything in the vid, leave a like, comment, I will get back to you, subscribe and ring that notification bell to stay up to date with my content. On to building! We're using 2 mil chipboard, of course, my standard, and I'm cutting several strips, 6 in total. They're 2.5 centimeters high, 10 centimeters wide. And sorry about the shaky video for the first few parts of this video. It's a new setup and I was kind of working out the kinks. It does get better. For the end pieces of these uh, barricades, I've again cut a strip of chipboard 2.5 centimeters high and then I mark along one side alternating between 1.5 centimeters and 0.5 and then do the opposite on the other side. So there are six in total of these and then I cut them out. Next up, gluing the sides to the end pieces. I push the end piece up against a flat sided box, uh, it's a Ferrero Rocher box, and then I whack the side piece on and super glue it. Now I do mess one of these up and have to rip the end piece off and glue it again, and then I accidentally glue it to the box as well, but hey ho these things happen, not a problem. Uh, after I've glued both end pieces on. I glue the other side piece and I, I do this just by eye. And see if you notice my Chinese version of Gorilla Glue. Now there's a small gap at the top of these barricades at the moment. So to fix this I get some more chipboard, it's a 5mm wide strip and I just glue this onto the top with PVA and then put a weight on top of all three barricades to keep it all, all level. I want a bit more detail on the sides of these barricades. So I've got some cardstock and I've cut a strip, it's 2.2 centimeters high, then I cut this into sections 4.9 centimeters wide. And there's two for each side. Sorry, I'm out of shot on some of this. Again, it's a new setup. You'll just have to bear with me. I've just drawn a dot in the corner of each of those card sections. I just did this by eye, trying to get it at about the same place and then I rivet these. So again, my fingernail beads, using damp finger, get four onto each, each card panel, maneuver them into place, and then a dab of super glue applied with a cocktail stick and push it into place with the other end of a cocktail stick. Now one of these you'll see, um, I mess it up, get it in the wrong position, glue dries too quickly, so I have to ping this off with my knife and then glue it again. actually take that long to do all those rivets. You get into a kind of groove, especially if you're listening to music or, you know, something. But anyway, I've got all these panels done, so I then just glue these to the barricades with PVA. I want to make all three barricades different. So for one, I've got some corrugated paper and I've just torn off the backing 
and then I just cut this in different shapes and then I sort of trim some of the sides to make them look old and damaged. Next I mod podge the front of one of the barricades and then stick that corrugated paper on and then mod podge the paper as well. After I've got all these stuck on I um, grab some tweezers and sort of fiddle around bending corners, bending edges to make it all look a bit worn. After this one I mod podge the rest of the barricades. on that corrugated paper barricade I've again got some wet wipe dried it out torn it up into little bits and then dipped it into watered down PVA and put it over the corner of that barricade just for a bit more sort of variation barricade I want barbed wire on top and I wanted a simple way of doing this because I want this to be a quick build. So what I've done is grabbed a longest strip of sculptor's mesh and then I've pulled out one of the horizontal wires. Now this is actually two rows worth it's joined at one end so I just pull that out and then twist it together initially with hands and then with pliers but it actually works better just twisting it by hand. I then, with this twisted, twisted wire, coil it around a straw. On to attaching that barbed wire. Initially, I was just going to super glue it on top, but I decided I wanted it a bit more secure. So I bent the end so it's kind of vertical, drilled a hole just a small hole in the end of the top of, of this barricade. Feed that bit in, super glue, and then trim the other end to length and bend the end piece down and do the same again, drilling a hole, gluing it in, and then I get a bit more glue and do along the top. do want all these barricades to look damaged you know they've been in use for ages so again using my pin vise I do some small bullet holes on all the barricades and then after this I prime them black and then base coat burnt umber on to painting I start off a good old dry brush of silver on all three barricades all over. I was a little bit heavy handed with this but that's fine. After the dry brush has dried I paint various panels different colours. So I paint some a darkish red, some blue, uh, some green and then one white. Although I actually go back over this white with a very light grey. I also do that cloth we've put on uh, a dark brown burnt umber. So 
the untouched barricade, I paint the main section black, both sides, and this is in preparation for hazard stripes. Gotta have hazard stripes. I did this off camera because it does take a while, but I've masked off stripes on that black barricade. And I start off sponging on white in those sections. I want the yellow to be quite warm, so after that white's dried, I sponge on a flesh tone. And finally, I sponge on yellow over that flesh tone. Ooh, the satisfying bit. Peeling off that masking tape. Eh, had a couple of leaks. Not too bad. So after this, I just touch those leaks up with some black. Once everything's dry, I use my homemade black wash, which is black paint, water, drop of dish soap, and I just slather this in on all over all the barricades and then dab some off of the panels and the, um, the hazard stripes. Okie dokie, black wash is now dry. So up next, I do a bit of dry brushing and I'm just using white and I basically dry brush lightly all the colored corrugated panels and then also the center of those red panels. Now I do this quite heavily, but uh, we'll come back to this later. And then I dry brush some flesh tone onto the cloth on the corner of the corrugated barricade. Right, going back to that white on the center of those red panels, what I do next is mix up some glaze of quite a bright red. So a glaze is just adding loads of water to the paint. So it just kind of tints what's underneath it. So I just apply this on those white parts. The lighting is a little bit funny and it looks quite pinkish, but it is really not, it is red. So I do this um, several, several times. After this is all dried, I mix up a kind of rusty texture. So it's just burnt umber paint, some baking soda and some very fine sand. Mix this all up with an old paintbrush and then just dab it on where I want rust. And I do this to all the barricades. texture paint is now dried. What I do next is sponge on burnt umber around those sections and then just some in different places where I want it to look dirty or, or worn down. After this is dried, I sponge on orange over the rust sections, not the dirty sections, just the rust sections. I then do some staining with a homemade brown wash, which is the same as my black wash, just obviously uh, brown paint, burnt umber in this case. 
and I just put this around those rust sections and then stain various other sections. As a final stage, just using some black paint, I do some drip marks and various stains and then some black around each of the bullet holes. And there we go, project complete. Here are some photos of the finished pieces. Hope you enjoyed the video and catch you in the next one. Cheers for now.